Welcome my friends to project management templates. These are free templates I'm going to be going through with you to show you what is available on the Center for Disease Control and Prevention's website. Let's take a look at the very first few. Over here we have an acquisition strategy, annual operational analysis, and then business case. While I am kind of interested in the business case, I'm curious to see what's in the acquisition strategy. So let's click on that and let's go to the table of contents. These documents are very easy to understand. So we have the background and objectives, plan of action, acquisition strategy approval, and so on. So let's click on the purpose of acquisition strategy. It reads, the overall objective of an acquisition strategy is to document and inform project stakeholders about how the acquisition will be planned, executed, and managed. This acquisition strategy should outline the specific actions necessary to execute the approved acquisition strategy. The acquisition strategy documents the approach to be taken for items such as the actual acquisition, contracting, and fiscal legal personnel considerations, ETC. And it goes into a lot more detail and you can see if this is something that would benefit you or not. Going back to the list of items, I am now going to hone in on those items that are quite peculiar to us as project managers because there are many other documents that could be used from a more strategic operational perspective. But I'm going directly into the business case. The business case makes a case for the project and as you can see here, they have done a brilliant job in breaking down the table of contents and these are all alternatives that you could put into this document to show possibilities. But there is one best alternative and that is described why you chose that alternative and this makes a case for the project and that's pretty much it for the business case. Next here we have a light version of the business case. I won't go into that. Then we have business impact analysis, a business needs statement, capacity planning. Let's click on that. That might be an interesting one for some folks. And let's take a look at the table of contents. Purpose of the capacity plan, solution requirements, assumptions or constraints. And then it gets into the actual cost and budget management and so on. So if this is something that is beneficial to you, then by all means go in and, and tweak it and use it. Okay, and it says, here is the executive summary and the analysis of capacity. And you do know capacity is all about availability of the resources that you're thinking of on the endeavor. Let's go back and let's see what else we've got. We've got certification and accreditation process templates, change management log, that's a big one. It's a good one for project managers. And here you can see we can log changes that are happening on the project. We've got the ID for the change, the current status, the priority. It's actually been done very well. I've been through a lot of these documents personally and I can tell you they have been done world class and a shout out to the team that did them. We have the change management plan, a plan for how to manage the changes. Let's click on that. And there is your change management plan, change request process flow requirements, change request form. This is basically a plan for how to manage the changes on the project, right? Uh, here we have the charter. We have a robust version of the charter. We have a light version. Let's click on the charter there. And let's close that and go straight to the TOCs. So we have the project and product overview, justification, all of that high level stuff, right? High level scope, the duration milestones, budget estimate, high level alternatives analysis, assumptions and constraints and risks, so on and so forth. Really great stuff here. All right, then we get into a communications management plan, uh, communications management plan light. There's a communication matrix over here. Let's click on that and see what the CDC have done with that. So this matrix is like a communications strategy of sorts where we have the communication vehicle and the target audience, the frequency of communication, the owner, and so on. 
If you go to the communications management plan, you can see this is slightly different. This is more textual in Word, and it just talks about the stakeholder vehicles on a broader scale, but this narrows it down. So to be quite honest, some projects you may only need this one, other more robust projects you may choose to have this as a blanket plan across the board. All right, we have a configuration management document here. And this configuration management document, you know what configuration is all about. It's really all about the widgets and the artifacts, uh, drawings in some cases, and which items are configurable and how you will track the versioning of them. In other words, version control. So here you can see that term, configurable items, configuration items, configuration identification, how it will be done, um, an artifact lifecycle, and so on. Because it's all about artifacts, right? Configuration management is all about artifacts. All right, moving on, we have contingency planning, data conversion, disposition, estimating, and implementation plan, independent verification and validation, interface control, issue management log. Let's click on that. And you know an issue log is where you document issues, and an issue is a problem. It's something happening now, and these need to be discussed, better understood, and then we need to assign these issues to an individual so that we can get resolved. So sometimes escalation is required. If it is, you've got a column for that. You've got the impact summary, the actions that will be taken, and then you're tracking those actions all the way to a final resolution. So this is a really powerful document that can help project managers. We have a lessons learned log, which is a regular suspect in the world of project management. We have the ID for the lessons, the situation being discussed, recommendations and comments, and if any follow-up is needed. And this is highly customizable because it's in Excel. You can download it and do what you need with it. All right, we have lessons learned, post-project survey, meeting agenda. These could be very helpful in just adding some structure to your meeting. So we have the program or the area, the meeting purpose, the time, who is the facilitator, what is the location, yada, yada. A lot of these tiny little documents could make a world of difference because it puts some really quality process into the mix for you. We have meeting minutes as well, and this is a template that you can use to track what is said during the meeting, next steps, decision made, discussions, parking lots, and so on. And honestly, if I were you as a facilitator, this is something you can actually display right there on your screen as you're going through the meeting with your stakeholders. All right, meeting sign-in roster, memorandum of understanding, an MOU, an SLA, just puts you and other parties on the same page, operation and maintenance manual, physical data model, product design, project completion, project kickoff meeting, it's a good one for project managers. A lot of times PMs are not into the detail about kickoff meetings, but here you can see the CDC have provided some really good itemized thoughts for how you can run this kickoff meeting. All right, moving back, we've got the project management plan, by far the most popular project document, for lack of a better word, or project artifact. And here we can see in the table of contents what exactly this is. So the project management plan brings everything together. We've got schedule, cost, scope, uh, risk, procurement, stakeholder, all the areas, all itemized. And all you do is go to the area and make sure you populate it accordingly. And I would just say proceed with caution. Don't make your project plan so big and verbose that people are afraid of it. You've got to tailor it down, tailor it down. And here we have a light version of the project management plan. And if you click on Project Management Plan Lite, you can see what that looks like. So again, we've got a breakdown of what this is. You could use this, or you could go into the details here where we have the schedule and so on and so forth. So note of caution, be careful how much information you begin putting into these because you don't want it to become a beast that just makes your life a misery. So be careful with that. Project process agreement, the project schedule, that's in Microsoft Project. We have a project schedule in Excel. And this is a very basic, if you will, uh, document that uh, you could use to track baseline, start, finish, and so on. 
it doesn't seem to have like any fancy Gantt chart, but for those people who need to have uh, something more fancy, uh, you might want to look for other material that I have shared uh, on this channel. There's one, for example, I call it the Phil's Gantt chart. And in this Gantt chart, I have uh, not only the start and the end dates and so on, I actually uh, show you uh, a Gantt chart um, with the graphical uh, display for those who are, are so inclined. So let me get that up on the screen if I can, just so that I can share it with those who are interested. Okay, here is our Gantt. Let's shift it over here. I've actually presented a an, an entire session where I show you how to uh, put this together. So let's see, there's the Gantt, and you can see here, if I can move myself out of the way so you can see it. Make myself very, very small at the corner there and uh, you can see going into the Gantt chart view you can see that I have a display uh, not only of the dates, the start, the finish, the duration like you have in MS Project but I also have uh, detail across the entire project and I also put in the capability to roll up these phases just so that you can present at a much higher level. So there, there's so many things, my friends, that you can do and undo in uh, Excel. And uh, I encourage you to just play around and, and use it as much as possible. In fact, that Gantt, uh, look for my video on the channel and you'll be able to download it and customize it as you see fit. So that's a project schedule. We have quality management plans here. Let's click that. And if you go to the table of contents, again, you got a, a very thorough breakdown of quality planning, quality assurance, quality control, which is pretty much the holy grail of quality according to the PMI. We have release plans, requirements definition, functional, non-functional, a requirements management plan, uh, my requirements traceability matrix, which is one of my favorites, and that just shows how you can track the requirements to their origin. Could be extremely helpful to you as a project manager. We also have service level agreement, security approach, staff management, which would be, of course, your human resource. Stage gate review, stage gate review assessment, stakeholder analysis, another uh, popular one which I find useful because you can write out all your stakeholders and then you can track the communication vehicles for them, their stake in the project. It just makes you a whole lot more mindful of your stakeholders. Status reports at the executive level. Let's click on that. And that's a very straightforward traffic light type report. We've got milestones. We've got planned accomplishments. Pretty straightforward. We have other ones like this one is a team member report. And in Word again quite straightforward as well. All right, we have system of records, test case, test plan. Let's click on that. And again, you can see they're so accessible. Many of these just put together using Word and it enables you to go in there and customize as you see fit. So we have test risks, the test approach, regulatory, uh, mandate criteria, so on and so forth. Okay, then we have the Work Breakdown Structure Dictionary. Check over here, you can see which format this is in. This is in Word. And let's go to the actual document. So this is the WBS Dictionary, which will have the terms explained in full for those items in the WBS. Okay, we have a WBS example here in Word, and it's a template that you can just go ahead, fill in, and use. We have another style of a WBS 
right there. And we have a third one. So let's open up the third one. And this is more like a textual WBS. Okay. And there you have it, my friends. Over 50 really awesome project documents. If I were you, I would bookmark this. I made a shortcut for myself, and you might want to take note of the shortcut. The shortcut that I use is tinyurl.com forward slash sigma PMO, but you can make your own uh, shortcut and just go back there. There was a student of mine who had access to this and used it in their project management office, new project management office, and got a wild uh, bumper harvest promotion. In fact, everyone was like, we bow down to the O almighty project manager because this individual knew what to do you know this individual got the message what you do in such a case you take the information you rebrand it with your logo <laughs> and you own it and you could do tremendous things in your organization all right i hope this helps and gives you some ideas of you know the top 10 top 20 you know if you will project documents that you can use to take your project management to the next level don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for your support.